Hi, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be reviewing some of our past Christmas presents and telling you what we loved and what we regretted. So if you enjoy this type of content and other homeschool and lifestyle content, please remember to subscribe and let's get into it. Okay, so I have made a list of some of our past Christmas presents that I think are worth it. I did not make a comprehensive list. We would be here forever but just some of our favorites, some things that really stood out to me over the past like three or four Christmases. And then a few things that maybe we regretted or things that I'm like, okay, this wasn't what I expected or how I thought it would work out for my kids sort of idea. And so that's what I'm gonna share with you today. Most of them I don't physically have here to show you just because we have used them or <laughs> they've been thrown away or things like that. There's a few of them that I do, like I can show you. The rest of them, I'll try to insert a picture over here because I think most of them are from Amazon. So if I can find them, I'll put a picture on this screen, but everything that I can find will be linked down below. So let's get into the things that I think are worth it for Christmas presents. Okay, I have my list here in front of me, so I don't forget anything, hopefully. I'm being very delicate with this so my son doesn't get mad. But the first thing I think is totally worth it is Legos in general but these Lego architecture ones are really cool. So this is Tokyo. We also have one for Paris. My daughter has one for Paris. And they're, I just think they're super cool, especially if you have any kids that are interested in engineering or in like architecture type stuff, then it's fun to build these and see these really cool buildings throughout the world. But also we got this for my son last year because he loves Japan. He's never been, but he loves Pokemon cards. He's studying Japanese. He's getting really, really good at it. And so we got this for him so that he could have something from Japan to kind of see. So I think this is a great idea. This is a gift that it's a little bit pricier of Legos than I usually spend. We don't buy huge Lego sets or anything, but I still think that they are really good and really worth the money. The next few things I wanted to mention are maybe slightly more unique gifts and obviously they're catered to certain types of kids. The first one was, again, last year we got my son a Japan crate. Like I said, he loves Japan. And so I wanted to get him some snacks from Japan. So I looked through a whole bunch of different types of crates and got him one. So the point of this is just something different. Okay, maybe look for something different. You could get, there's different types of food crates you could get if it's they like a certain type of place in the world. Maybe they just love food <laughs> and like to explore different types of snacks. So then you could find maybe like the universal yums or something like that would be good or you could just get them a subscription box of some sort okay there's like kiwi co stuff there's lots of different crates there's smell science if you want to do a whole bunch of science stuff there's lots of different options depending on what you do what you like i think you know mark rober has his and so you could get some of those things if they like doing stem stuff or like i said if they like food you could do something that way and then another, I think, at least a little bit more unique gift is sewing kits, which is what we got my daughter last year for Christmas was a few sewing kits. Most of them I got off of Etsy. I have a friend, I think her Etsy shop is like still going. And I think they actually just restocked these, so, but hopefully they'll still be available by the time this video goes up. But this was like a little, their first quilt, and it comes in a kit with, you know, all the things you need to make the first quilt. At least, you know, all the fabric and I think the binding, I'm not sure about the thread, but the instructions. And so we got her this kit last year. My friend actually sent it to me from Texas, and my daughter made it and she loves it. She uses it by her bed. <laughs> like a little rug and so something like this or she had a few that i found on etsy that were bags and so if they're still available i'll link those they're on my christmas videos from last year so i'll link all that kind of stuff down below so you can check it out but i think those are just a few maybe more unique things that you're not just buying off of amazon and they cater a little bit more to individual needs and interests okay guys this hair is not gonna last long <laughs> It's so hot, I cannot stand it. Anyway, um, the next thing is remote control cars and not just any remote control car. I like to have something where my kids are involved in the making process. There's a hair on my arm. We're just doing really good with hair today. And so having one they have to build. So last year we got one for my son. <laughs> this is what he brought me. I was like, can you go get your remote control car? He's like, it's not built. <laughs> And so I'll try to insert a picture over here, I'll scoot over a little bit. So when I put in pictures, you can see, but this is the base of it. 
and he can build it. There might be a few different options for that one. There's several options on Amazon of building different types of remote control cars. And I just think that's a much funner way to do it. And also it just is increases learning than just like, here's one that already goes or one of the huge ones, you know, again, depending what your budget is, my dad used to build like the monster trucks and that could be cool. But again, that's more advanced and more expensive. And so you'd have to, I don't even know where he got kits for that kind of stuff. Cause those were pretty intense. And so there's that option if you have someone that's really, really into it. But just for a good like STEM project, I feel like remote control cars are really, really good. The next thing is clay jewelry. And I just think this is super fun. And so this is a set my daughter got last year and she got to make the little heart that goes in here, right? She's mixing the clay together. This is polymer clay, so you have to cook it. And so you mix, you know, she marbled it basically and then cooked it and you can put it in here and then she also got these like made these beads with the same so that it matches and it had a cool little tool for you to like poke holes through all the beads and it came with some gems so if the kit that we got is still available i'll link it down below but there's tons of clay jewelry type kits and again it just requires a little bit more creativity it's not a gift that's just gonna make noise and only last for two seconds it's something that will last a little bit longer. And again, like a year later, she still has this jewelry and she enjoys wearing it. So I just think it's a really good gift. Another artsy type gift, if you have a child that likes art, is string art. And last year, it might've been a couple years ago, I got some Arteza string art. And I don't have, again, any to show you. I'll try to pop an image up here for you to see. But it's just super fun. You put the little needles into the pitcher and then wrap string around it to create the pitcher and my daughter enjoyed doing it. And it also was, it had several projects, so it lasted quite a while. So I thought it was a really fun project and you can keep the pictures if you want. Obviously you can just have it so they can create it and maybe you only want to keep one. I don't know if you want like 10, <laughs> 10 of them around your house, but maybe just keep one. But again, another fun like artsy type project. Something for people that like comfort, children that like comfort or just like slippers is the flip flop slippers. A few years ago, I got my girls some that were like a cheetah print or some sort of animal print off of Amazon and they love them. They're just so soft. They put them on. I think my younger daughter might have my older daughters now because, you know, they she outgrew them. But they actually wore them more than I thought they would. And it's not super hot because your foot is open, but it's still that comfort fun thing. And so that was another fun, like if you want someone that likes footwear <laughs> that if, like, maybe loves shoes or loves comfort or loves their feet to be warm and fuzzy. I feel like slippers in general or flip-flop slippers might be a good option. So I think snap circuits is another really good present. This is one again last year, the year before we got for my son that's turning eight. Well, he's turning nine this year. He's eight right now. This is the arcade one, but we have had one, sorry, the glare from the window and the ring light is not super great. But we've had another one for my older son, who's almost 12. I don't even remember when we got it. It's probably been like five, six, seven years ago. And it was just the original like basic one, which I'll try to link that one down below also. And we still have it. He still plays with it sometimes. But I think these are super fun, especially again, if you have someone that's into maybe engineering or electrical engineering or just electrical work in general, or that just likes to tinker with things, okay? This is a lot of fun to, to do, and there's a lot of different options here as well. Another fun, great project that my, he's now eight years old, almost nine, has enjoyed in the past is the Creator Legos. We got a dinosaur one, we got one for space, and the reason they're fun is because there's multiple options of things you can make. Usually it's like a three-in-one type of three, type of thing. And so when you get it, it's like, okay, you can build this, but then you can also build this. So it's not just here's the set and this is the only option. And that's just been really fun for them. And so he's really enjoyed that. So I know that there's other creator options out there, but those are just the two that we've used and my sons really enjoyed them. Another favorite of ours is advent calendars and the Lego ones specifically. The hardest part for me with these, I have a lot, this is kind of a, like it was worth it, but also not <laughs> because 
I don't know what to do with them afterwards. Okay, they're kind of odd Legos. You know, they my kids almost want them to stay in their sets. Like we've had a Harry Potter one, we've had an Avengers one. I don't remember some of the other ones. We've had several different ones throughout the last several years. And the problem is like, what do you do with them afterwards? Do you incorporate them into their sets? My kids almost want them to stay, you know, in their own sets, but then they never play with them. So, you know, it's fun to do during Christmas and my kids usually just take turns because buying all of them one would be really expensive. One of the like Lego count advent calendars. But I also, again, they don't ever play with them after Christmas. So, <laughs> so I don't know, you can decide, you know, maybe your kids would, or maybe you don't care if they play with them after, then I, I think it's a really great gift. Another gift that we got in the past for my, she's now six, but this was a couple years ago, was a make your own unicorn like nightlight thing. And it was actually, it's a fairly quick project, but it was also fun. Again, something I am all about them having to build something or use their imagination or hands-on learning, not just toys that make noise and that I want to shoot within a second of opening them. <laughs> and so this one, she had to, you know, you put the little lid on it and it's a nightlight, but you decorate the inside how you want to. There's also like the geraniums, is that what they're called? That you can do that and they build, like you could grow flowers or some little plant in them. So those types of things are fun. Again, the project itself doesn't always last a super long time, but I think the value behind it is much greater because it's a hands-on project. If I had to pick like one of my kids' all-time favorite things, this would be a pretty close one. So perler beads, they love perler beads. So my cut, my son just grabbed one to show you. <laughs> so of Spider-Man that they've made, but they've done some three dimensional ones. They've done a whole lot of just these types of images and things like that. And it's just a lot of fun. I don't love it. <laughs> That's the thing that I don't love how it takes up all this space, you know, in, until they get ironed they if you hit the little boards they're on they can go everywhere and it totally ruins the design and that's no fun for anybody and so it's kind of this love-hate relationship with it because they'll make them in my laundry room and just leave them there until someone irons them for them and it's it's kind of annoying <laughs> but they absolutely love them. They used their allowance to buy even more after they got some for Christmas a few years ago. So I feel like this is really good and it's something that keeps them occupied for a long time, but it's not great if you have little people around, you know, because they're gonna mess them up or put them in a space where little people aren't going to mess up their projects. But perler beads are a really big win in our family. The next thing I wanted to mention that's a favorite of ours is just the Learning Resources brand. I was gonna grab some stuff and I forgot, but we have a few different things like the sorting, there's like sorting different fruit or there's like little finger puppets that my two-year-old sometimes thinks is fun. He's not quite two yet, but he thinks it's funny when I put them on my fingers. But they have tons, so many. If you just search learning resources on Amazon, it's like crazy amounts. I feel like I like more of their things that cater to younger children than I do any older. They have lots of just learning ABCs, lots of sorting type stuff. So I'll link a few of our favorites down below if you wanna check them out. Okay, so a few books that my kids have gotten in the past that they really liked was there's this Usborne fingerprint book. There's a few different types of them and they were just a lot of fun. They have a little pad on the side where you can you know, do your finger. And then the pictures, there might have been a dinosaur one for one of my kids, I can't remember what the other one was, but you're creating pictures using your fingerprints and it's just unique and really fun and I think they still have them. I feel like I saw um, on Rooted and Rust that Abby had some of them and so they're just great and you get them from Usborne Books. And then something else my kids really like that has is usually a Santa gift or whatever for them, is sticker books. They love like the paint by sticker books. Those are really, really fun. And we use them on road trips. We use them all the time. And they're just a really good fun thing where I'm like having to dig at the bottom of the barrel to find any more sticker books because they've had so many of them. But those are kind of two more 
hands-on activity type books that they've really liked. Okay, a few like engineering type things, I guess, that we've got from my daughter over the years because she wants to be an engineer is this game. I believe her grandma actually got this for her, but this is a roller coaster engineering. So you get to build all these roller coasters and that's really cool. Another one that I don't have here was the Mighty Makers Ferris Wheel. And that was also another fun one where it was kind of similar to this, right? With a similar type of parts where you're putting it together, but it's making a Ferris wheel. There are some like little characters, I believe, involved in that too. And so if you have blossoming or budding engineers, whatever the correct term is, I think those are a few of the fun ones that we've had over the years that my daughter has really liked and continues to use. All right, if you have artists in the family, I feel like a light tablet is really nice. So this one plugs in, there's a little plug right here, and they can trace stuff on it. And my kids don't use these as much as I thought they would, but I still think that it's a great idea. And I actually had plans to use them more like me personally for watercolor and stuff. Cause if you want to trace the pictures or outline them a little bit before you watercolor, you could do that. But I just, I like the idea of it. We haven't used it as much as I thought, but I still think this is a really great gift, especially if you have someone that wants to do more like artsy type things they would probably get really good use out of it. Okay, the last favorite I wanted to mention is electrical toothbrushes. This is a little bit more practical, but it's been a really great gift for my kids. And it's just something that they use all the time. So if you're worried about them like actually using the gift, get them an electrical toothbrush because unless your kids don't brush your, their teeth, then maybe they don't use it all the time. But it is something that's practical. It's something that's helpful, especially for younger kids, because sometimes it's hard for them to get the motion and learn how to brush their teeth. So electrical toothbrushes are really great. I think we've just gotten some of the Oral-B ones off of Amazon. I'll link them down below. And they've been really great and you can change out the heads and stuff when they get old. So get them an electrical toothbrush. Okay, some gifts I think might not be worth it. <laughs> Number one is Love Every. It's a subscription box that comes quarterly. And this one I have, I have mixed feelings about it. I feel like depending on your child, it could be worth it. Okay, it's $120 maybe, I can't even remember, a quarter. And we did get several of them. The first one was last year for Christmas. I got it for my, he was almost one at the time, my almost one year old boy. And he has hardly played with the toys at all. They're like Montessori inspired and they're really good quality toys. And they're the ones that I've kept over the last year. And he plays with them occasionally. Again, the problem is he just doesn't play with them enough. So I don't know if it justifies the cost of it, which is why I stopped getting it. But if you have a child that will sit down and play with toys, then maybe it's a really good idea because they're really good quality toys. But my child does not. <laughs> my toddler does not hold still for really long periods of time at all. And so it just was not a good fit for him. So when considering this gift and other gifts, think about your child and if it is something that will really work for them. And honestly, you might not know until you get it, which is the case with Love Every for us. I feel like maybe my baby now might use it when she gets older, so we'll have to see about that. But that was something personally that just probably wasn't worth the price. Something else that I didn't think was worth it that we got a few years ago from my daughter was painting by number. I think for a number of reasons, um, <laughs> a number of reasons, it was maybe a little bit too hard. I don't think the paint was really good, so maybe getting something better quality and again, I don't think she was interested enough in painting for it to be worth it. For So it wasn't necessarily something that worked well for us. And the ones I got just weren't very good quality. I, I At least I don't think so. And so that was something that didn't work great for us. Maybe it will work well for someone else or someone that's willing to sit down and do it. But it also just might have been too hard for the age that she was at. Okay, last year I got my son those polka dot Melissa and Doug books. You know, it's like the the pop it things except book in a book and first of all he just ripped him up <laughs> he he waited to rip them up for a while but second of all i feel like a lot of the little poppets didn't work super well and that was some of the reviews had said that so i was like we'll try it out and some of them worked really well and he thought it was fun to go through and pop them but there was a lot that didn't so that could be a little bit frustrating <laughs> as well and so as far as that goes, I feel like just the quality of it, the poppets weren't super great. 
And so that's why I don't think it was necessarily worth it for us. Okay, a few games that we got in the past that I don't think are worth it were this Ocean Raiders and then it came with Cloud Hoppers as well. I We have that I think somewhere still, but they're math games. Honestly, we just don't play them. It was recommended on YouTube, but we just don't really reach for these games. So that's really my only reasoning behind it. Maybe they're good games and fun to play, but it's just not something my kids gravitate towards. And so I don't know if it was really worth it to get these games or not. Okay, so we're down to the last two things. So the first thing that I think wasn't really worth it for us was the Melissa and Doug Playhouse. Again, very cute idea. My kids just didn't play with it. My daughter, I got it for my daughter who was maybe four or five at the time and she just wasn't that interested in it. I thought she might be, but they just don't play with that kind of stuff very often. And so again, if you have someone that likes playhouse type things, I feel like the quality was pretty good, you know, and it's made out of wood and all the like figurines and stuff you can get her out of wood, but it just, we just didn't play with, she didn't play with it. <laughs> and so that's why I'm like, why did we even get this? It was something that I was like, we'll try something different. And it was kind of a flop for us, but maybe it would be a win for you. I'm not really sure. <laughs> and the last thing that we got that I regret is scented putty. <laughs> It was from Lakeshore Learning and each of my kids got a different scent and oh my gosh, I hated those things. I, I don't like that kind of stuff in general. Putty's a little bit better. I guess it doesn't, like it's okay. It doesn't make a huge mess. You know, it's not like slime or anything like that or kinetic sand as far as mess factor, but man, those things did not smell great. And I could tell when my kids got them out and I just did not, I was like, why? <laughs> Why did we do this? Like they were just so strongly scented and not in a good way. <laughs> so I I just, I wouldn't recommend getting those. Again, maybe you like smells or those types of things don't bother you, but I'm a little bit sensitive to that. So I didn't really like it. They were just too heavily scented in not great ways. All right, so that is my review of our past Christmas presents, things that we loved that were worth it and things that maybe weren't worth it very much to us or just didn't work well for our family, for my kids and things they didn't really play with. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have things that you, like Christmas presents that you've just loved in the past or maybe things that were big flops for you, comment them down below because I'm sure all of us would benefit from hearing from them. And remember to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you next time.